What's up, everyone? We're back for another episode of Locked on Bucks. And on today's show, we're discussing whether the Bucks are under more pressure or less pressure. There were some interesting quotes that came from Media Day. We're continuing that coverage, so let's get into it. Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can find me daily on this show and read my stuff over at ESPN and NBA Australia. And joining me, regular co-host, first time on YouTube from the Technical Foul Podcast. And you guys have just finished recording your weekly show, so you're doing double yeah. duty today, and I uh, <laughs> certainly appreciate that. Camille Davis, what's going on? And not too much. As you mentioned, double duty today, but when you're talking about sports and just you know being able to hang out with friends, it's it's a good time always, so I'm not complaining at all. So before we get into it, and I, I said in a little uh, pre-introduction there that we're going to be talking about the Bucks and whether we think they're under more pressure this year or less pressure, because I think there's a couple of ways – you can uh, approach that question and look at that question. And I think some of the quotes we got from Media Day were interesting. But we do want to uh, thank everyone for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Bucks is free and available on all platforms, uh, including YouTube now. So you can find it at Locked On Bucks. So, and I think it, it starts and ends with Giannis. And I, I don't know which way you want to approach this, Camille. Um, but I, I think it was a question that I certainly tried to ask a number of players, and Chris Milton was another one that I asked in regards to whether he feels any different way coming into this season after winning a championship. So what, what would your answer be? If I, if I said to you, uh, I think uh, the Bucs are under more pressure or I think the Bucs are under less pressure after winning the title? I think I would kind of go back to your for- first point in that it all begins and ends with Giannis. And something that Giannis mentioned was he brought up how Shaq made up how, you know, David Robinson didn't uh, sign an autograph for him. He talked about the fact that Michael Jordan took everything personal, um, just kind of figuring out, finding that motivation for you to get you through. And I think that he's leading the charge with that being the, you know, pretty much the leader of the Bucks because if you think about it, are the Bucks really under pressure when a lot of the narrative around the Bucks is that, you know, this was a lucky championship and, you know, oh, Kevin Durant's foot was on the line and, oh, if Kyrie was healthy, oh, if, if Harden was healthy, oh, you know, just the narrative around the Bucks championship run has some question marks from a lot of different people. And I can definitely see this team using that as motivation. Like they didn't believe in us last year. We won the whole thing. We come back this year. And they still don't have us as favorites. Like the Nets are still favorite to come out the East. And it's like, we just won. Like we understand injuries and whatnot, but like we just won. And I feel like this team still has a lot to prove, although they're a championship team. But I think the fun in proving that, you know, that we are a real championship team is that you already have the pressure off your back of knocking that first one out. So you have that confidence from what you were able to build in the playoffs and you're able to go forward now. So I think like they're not really under that much pressure as a normal, you know, championship uh, defending team would be, at least in my opinion. Yeah, so I like the way that you tried to answer that because I feel similar. Uh, I I think it's interesting when you read, you know, preseason previews and teams that uh, people are looking forward to watching in the Bucs are never in there. They're they're just not. I don't don't know why it is. When you see what Giannis did, what Drew Holiday did, what Chris Middleton did, to me, they're, they're among the most watchable teams in the league. Maybe it's the fact that we're in year four now of the Bucks being a really, really good regular season team. So there's not that level of surprise. There hasn't been that many changes. Perhaps last year the expectations were so low because people didn't think that they were going to perform in the playoffs. But at least there was the intrigue of Drew Holiday. And at least there was the intrigue of what's going to happen with Bud. So maybe this year it's uh, not for me, certainly not for me and not for Bucks fans, but maybe for other people it's a little bit boring. But here's why I think that the Bucs could be under more pressure. And and I think I look at it at an individual basis. So there'll there'll be some players on the roster that will feel much better. They performed in the playoffs. Maybe they don't go in feeling more under pressure. But I think someone like Giannis does. And you spoke about how he finds motivation. 
But I think one of the things that's going to continue to motivate him because he talks about wanting to be the greatest. He still says that Kevin Durant is, mm-hmm. oh, uh, sorry, LeBron James is the best player in the world right now. But he also made similar comments about Kevin Durant. And I think part of that is that he does respect those guys. Secondly, I don't think he's trying to start an all-out rivalry with these guys. But if you look at teams that have gone back-to-back championships, so I just wrote a couple down that uh, were after Michael Jordan. So we know what the Bulls did in the 90s. But the Lakers, 2000, 2001, 2002, then the Lakers again in 2009, 2010, uh, Miami, 2012, 2013, and then Golden State, uh, 2017, 2018. And you think of who the stars were on those teams. For the Lakers, it was obviously Kobe, a guy that Giannis you know, idolized. And then you, the other two guys to do it were LeBron and KD, the best players in the in the world. So, uh, you know, arguably along with Giannis. So I think for him, what he's building back-to-back championships is is a pretty juicy carrot to be dangling in front of him and something that I think that he would take really, really seriously. That is a great point. I didn't even think about it like trying to chase the back-to-back mystique in, in that way when you highlight those superstars. And I think that both of our points kind of coincide with one another because I feel like that internal drive that like, no, I want to be a great. And I see that only these guys have gone back to back since Jordan. Like, no, I want my name to be there too. I definitely want that for me. And I could see that being something that they keep closer to the best. Like I remember during media day, um, I can't recall which reporter asked the question, but they brought up how Chris revealed that do it again was on their, their board or was the message that was spoken. And Giannis kind of like, who said that? That's new to me. I don't know about (laughs) like, you know, he'll never really (laughs) give us all those details, but I could definitely see, that being something that drives him, that back-to-back mystique. Which, by the way, is absolutely ridiculous because everyone in the world heard him 30 seconds after they won the title tell him that they were going to do it again. I mean, the guy's a maniac. So that's ridiculous. (laughs) I I don't know why you're trying to to act like you didn't know that or it's not a thing. But that was something that I actually thought about when I was going back and listening to some of the interviews again uh, from Media Day yesterday. I, I was sort of, I sort of kicking myself. I'm like, I should have just directly asked him what back-to-back means. It's not that we're not going to have more opportunities to do so, but I, I think it's I think it's really fascinating. I, I think when you look at players like Chris Middleton, perhaps, I, I do think that despite him saying that nothing changes, despite him saying that they've won the title and they'll go in with the same uh, motivation, I, I think in, in game situations, I think there's less pressure on him because he's proven it. He's done it. I mean, this guy went absolutely off in all the most important parts. So I think individually that might be a huge benefit to him. Um, but again, I just keep coming back to the chasing greatness and Giannis uh, hoping uh, that he could be that guy. And then you think about the legacy he's already got. We spoke about it last week with Frank on the show and his resume for a 26-year-old. Mm-hmm. You want to add back-to-back titles, maybe another finals MVP, maybe another regular season MVP, the, the, the path just continues to, to spike. And the thing with Giannis that's so exciting is all that's on the table. It all feels attainable. Like it's all on the table. Like we can see, and we've, the joy of being a Bucks fan, I always say like, if you were were still watching during like the, the red and green days when like it was baby Giannis, rookie Giannis, and I see you have the Jersey up uh, (laughs) behind you. But like, if you were watching during those days and we had like just hopes, like glimmers, like make, you know, Hey, this kid could be, he could be something. We didn't necessarily think what he is now, but we literally got to watch him year after year develop and improve and see how much he wanted it. And to see him finally attain that championship here was, was great. And then Chris, the running mate with him as well, like all the (laughs) conversation around Chris Middleton and should the boys trade him? Was he worth this contract? And now we're here at this moment. It's like the growth has been phenomenal. And I can only imagine how hungry they still are. And those those years weren't that far. Like that wasn't that long ago, where Toronto was babying us in the playoffs, and we couldn't make it past Boston in the first round. And I don't know. It's cool to see, and I think they're gonna be hungry in part because of what they were able to, you know, accomplish and what they had to overcome. But also what I mentioned earlier, where they're still not seen as the favorites, even though they have shown their growth and their improvement, and that they put the work in, and it's still it's still not enough for some people. And there's something to be said for stability as well because, you know, we look what's going on in Brooklyn. And, yeah, look, the talent. I'm not going to sit here and say that on on pure talent and superstar talent, the Nets don't have the edge. Like, I'm perfectly fine with the fact that they're favorites. But the reason why 
uh, people have questioned them in, in the past is because the instability, whether that be injuries, whether that be other factors uh, that we see play out. So who knows? There's something to be said for the Bucks locker room, the guys that they've brought in and the stability they've been able to have. So you mentioned the jersey I have behind me, and this is the benefits of YouTube. We don't have Frank Stogg, Blanche, or Dudley on the show <laughs> today, but you will see this hat I'm wearing, which is like kind of a retro, for those listening, this pinstripe uh, old school bango. I just found this in a box. Uh, it was very dusty, so I put this on. You've, <laughs> you've, you've got uh, you've got a fantastic Brewers top on. We know the Brewers are rolling. It's uh, going to be an exciting time. They said there's going to be some uh, parties in the Deer District, which they did back in 2019 when they made their run as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I've got a question for you when it comes to the roster and if you think there's any holes. Uh, so we're going to get to that. Before I do that, I'm going to talk about Sleeper. Uh, do you play fantasy basketball, Camille? I do not. Only uh, daily fantasy against friends if we do like a little private pool. Interesting. So daily fantasy, that's that's interesting because I don't play fantasy basketball either. I always just get tired of it and, and I run Same. out of energy by, you know, before Christmas. So anyway, let's talk about Sleeper. In 2018, the fantasy sports experts at Sleeper realized that fantasy basketball was broken. Games were being won and lost based on whose player had more scheduled games that week. It made no sense and required very little strategy. So in 2020, Sleeper released a brand new way of playing fantasy basketball. It's called Game Pick, and it's only available on Sleeper. In Game Pick, owners pick a single game per week for each starter to count towards the team's total score, ensuring an even number of games played per opponent. So that's what we're talking about here, Camilla. It cuts out the time. You don't have to worry about changing the lineup every single day and and guys that are questionable heading into the game or injured or whatever it may be, uh, you're set up at the start of the week, which is uh, which is fun. It makes it easier, less time. And the only way you can uh, do this is if you download the Sleeper app and start a game pick league, you will not be disappointed. And uh, speaking of not being disappointed, uh, this is a situation that's very familiar to, I'm sure, everyone that's listening to this podcast. And it's related to Direct TV Stream. If you've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff, I can tell you a way uh, that you can simplify all this and there'll be no hassle. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings you live TV and on demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports movies and shows all in the one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. As we get back into it now, I mentioned this right off the top, but uh, we do want to thank you for making Lockdown Bucks your first listen every day. We're about to get into a segment where I ask you about a potential hole on the roster, if you think there's any holes on the roster. Uh, but when you're done listening to Lockdown Bucks, uh, jump across and listen to the Lockdown Fantasy Basketball Podcast, the number one fantasy basketball podcast in the world. Uh, that's, that's a fact. I mean, when I heard the numbers that that podcast does, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. People are into their fantasy basketball. There's no doubt about that, Camille. But when you look at this roster... The last couple of days, we've seen the moves. Diakite, gone. Elijah Bryant, gone. Yeah. 14 guys on the roster. Uh, 13 guys with fully guaranteed uh, contracts. I wasn't sure whether uh, Yorgos Kalatakis was going to come out for the start of the season, but it, 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 he's, he's here. Or that's what I'm told. He's here, and I expect that he will be on uh, the main roster there. So when you look at it, do you see a- any potential areas of concern for you with the guys that they do have? I agree with the general consensus around maybe a little short on bigs. It's like we have a lot of guards, a lot of guys that can handle the ball, um, maybe put in different situations. Like you can definitely throw out a two-point guard lineup with Drew and George, and that's fine. Like there's a lot of different mixing and matching you can do with the guards, but as for the bigs, you got Brooke, you got Giannis, you got Bobby Portis. Uh, the Bucks will play the Nassis and Shime at, you know, small ball fours, but – that's the, the really small ball for us. Uh, that's the only area where I would think we're kind of weak at. Um, and even, I mean, that's what we had last year outside of uh, Shimmy, but we had PJ. So that is what it is. But if you wanted to strengthen any area, I would think that would be it. You can never be too short on, on defensive wings, but the Bucks have Drew Holiday. They have George Hill. They're going to have Dante returning from injury. They have Pat Connaughton, Grayson Allen. 
They got Rodney Hood, <laughs> Jordan Wara. I mean, that's not the defensive part, but they got Jordan Wara. And <laughs> so I feel like they're kind of set when you look at the wing and the guards, but they could tighten up the big rotation a little bit more. So I agree with you. I think that that is where everyone's looking at it. And just at least asking the question, we we did mention this going way back when the Bucks did sign uh, Shemi Ojale. And of course, we had John Corrales from Locked On Celtics on the show. And he said, look, he, he legitimately can play four. In fact, the majority of his minutes have been at the four. So I do think that the Bucks just are, are saying that he's going to be a guy that will soak up minutes. I also agree. I think we're going to see a lot of Thanasis this regular season. I really mm-hmm. do. I, again, People got on me last year because I said I didn't think he was going to be in the playoff rotation, and he wasn't in the end as the Bucks really, really short, shortened it up and the starters played bigger minutes, and that's totally fine. But we did see him during the regular season have some real moments, and I've said it, but you've got to give this guy credit. He's legitimately improved at his age, at an age where you don't see a lot of guys do that. So I'm on the Thanasis train. I'm cool with seeing Thanasis play this regular season. But you, you mentioned bigs, Camille, so I might have a, a solution. And uh, you can let oh me know boy. what you think. What do, what do you What do you think? So those that are watching on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> so, Camille, Camille, so Camille wasn't even looking at the screen. Johnny O'Brien. <laughs> I look down and I look back up, and Johnny O'Brien staring at me. Oh man! Um, when that news broke, my husband actually texted me, and it just said, "Is this shit for real?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, it is." They, yeah, Johnny O'Brien's back. Job is back. Yes, yes. What a what a, just a random thing. And and I don't think anyone's sitting here. And look, I, I always say this: anyone that's been in the box and generally, you know, hasn't done anything for the for the um, you know to to carry any dislike about him. I mean, he was fine, but uh, he just didn't have much of an impact. It's crazy to think that he hasn't been in the NBA, and all of a sudden now the the NBA champions have given him a training camp deal. And I, I don't think that he's going to be on the roster, but. Just what a what a wild notification to get that the Bucks are signing Johnny O'Brien. It's crazy. Honestly, and Johnny O'Brien, that's name I haven't even really thought about since he left the Bucks. Like I had to actually look up what he's been up to yeah. since his his NBA stint. I wasn't aware that he went overseas and, and kept playing. So who knows? Um the the <laughs> the storyline would be amazing if Johnny O'Brien was actually talented. Like if he was able to make the roster, like, wow, Johnny has improved oh, yeah. and he's back and things of that sort. I'm also on the team. Like let's bring old bucks back. Like let's give some old bucks, like the 15th spot on the bench. And just for nostalgia reasons, rock out with that. I've, I've been on that train too. Johnny O'Brien's a stretch one for me though. Um, <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's, that's when I have not considered saying let's bring back, but. Hey, if if he was able to earn a shot in training camp, I'm definitely cheering for the guy. Um, hope the best for him. Yeah, we might see him play a few minutes in the preseason. Uh, as we discussed yesterday with Frank, I mean, it, it just doesn't really make much sense for the Bucks to to sign a 15th guy right now. It, it you know mm-hmm. for all sorts of reasons. And again, we always say this: it's not for us to to care about the owner's money. But it, you, if you just do the simple simple math, it doesn't make sense. Uh, for them to sign a guy now, they're probably better off waiting towards a buyout season, trade deadline, whatever it may be, and see what plays out because you don't know uh, what obstacles are going to come your way during the season. What about uh, closing lineups? I, I think it's interesting that you did mention George Hill because it's kind of strange. I don't know if it's just me, but I, every time I think about the roster and then I see something with George Hill, I think, oh, yeah, he's back. I, can, I, I keep on forgetting that George Hill... Um, is is back with the Bucks, but it could be a significant addition, and I think the idea of playing him next to Drew Holiday is is intriguing. Definitely, during last season, I I said a few times like I would feel a lot more confident about the Bucks championship hopes if they had someone like George Hill as a backup point guard. I said that a few different times, and to see George Hill actually back on the roster after winning a championship, something I didn't did not expect to see, but I am very glad to see it because I feel like you can do so much with George Hill. Um, as your backup guard, the Drew George lineups could be deadly defensively. Um, if, if things go the way I'm thinking that they could, you throw a lineup out with like with George, with Drew, with Chris, with Giannis, with Brooke. I mean, I don't. <laughs> that's really tough. That's 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 really tough to get past. You can even put Giannis at the center and play small like there's so much you could actually do with that double guard lineup when you have two guards that you can both you can trust both of them to handle the ball 
you can trust him to be communicating, to be in the right place, to play defense. It could be a lot of fun. You could even throw Bobby out there as the four with Giannis as the the big there to get a little bit more uh, offense in that situation to have Giannis, you know, being the rim protector. But there's a lot they can do depending on what the game is calling for. Yeah, I think, you know, particularly with George Hill, I, the way that I look at it, there was times last year where we said, okay, well, what are you going to do with Brent Forbes? He was great against Miami, but after that, you couldn't really play him. So if you think about having those two guard lineups with Drew and George Hill, he's just, he's bigger, he's longer, um, he's, he's, Proven to be a very good shooter. Is he going to shoot uh, up in the 40%? Again, certainly hope so. Um, and then he can just defend, as you pointed to. So, yeah, I think it's exciting. Then you had the other guys that have played in small ball lineups mm-hmm. previously with Pat Conard and Dante DiVincenzo, and then even uh, Semi Ojale, as, as we pointed to as well. So I think versatility is going to be key. Uh, when we come back, I want to ask you about any silly quotes that you heard from media <laughs> days, because there was one in particular that caught my eye. Uh, today and uh, we we need to discuss it because it was absolutely ridiculous. But before we do that, uh, let's talk about Built Bar. Uh, we've been talking about the best tasting protein bar that's ever been made for a long time. We've been talking about freedom of choice when it comes to Built Bar. Uh, there's so many delicious flavors. Um, when you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, you're simply missing out, but it's not too late. You can still do it. Go to built.com. Uh, maybe get a, get yourself a mix box. You'll get two of each of the nine flavors. Uh, not only a, uh, not only are Built Bars tasty and satisfying, they're healthy for you too, which is a, a rare combination, let's be honest. So order today and you can get a grasshopper cookie or raspberry or whatever you like. Built Bar is the official protein bar of the US track and field team as well. It's pretty cool. So go to built.com. Use the promo code locked and you'll get 15% off your order. Uh, use promo code LOCKED for 15% off at built.com. So, Camille, uh, you know, one of the, the, the funny things about Media Day is uh, you get a lot of cliches. You, you hear a lot of players that are in the best shape of their life. You hear a guy stack it on the, the pounds, the kilos, as I would say. They're in the gym. They're feeling good. They think that they can contend. And then there's some quotes that I, I just – I'm like, guys – don't say that, okay? We didn't really get any of that with the Bucks. Um, I've said it before. It was really a, a jovial, uh, I would say, media day. Everyone was in a great mood. Plenty of jokes, plenty of laughs. But the Golden State Warriors media day. Avery Bradley. I saw this come across. Uh, it was Kendra Andrews that uh, did this tweet. Of course, the sister of Malika Andrews. Those guys are just taking over the media world. It's incredible. Uh, Incredible to see the work that they're doing. But Avery Bradley, and I don't have the tweet up in front of me here, but well, yeah, paraphrasing, but he said, I think I'm the best on-ball defender in the NBA. And it got me thinking, because clearly, because clearly he's not. I mean, it's just a ridiculous quote. And it got me thinking about NBA locker rooms. We know everyone's supportive. We know everyone likes pumping each other up. But I, like, if I was friends with Avery Bradley, I would be... <laughs> I'd be taking the piss out of him for saying that. I would say, dude, <laughs> I'd say, dude, that you can't be saying that. That's absolutely ridiculous. Do you think that his own teammates would have been laughing at him for that quote? They would have to be. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of great perimeter defenders in the league right now. I mean, we just saw what Drew did all throughout the playoffs, throughout the finals. We saw what Drew did in the Olympics when, you know, he was able to be a little bit more physical with his hands. So, I don't know what Avery was thinking. I mean, you even have, I mean, Ben Simmons, you have Kawhi Leonard, you have uh, Matisse Thibel. Like there are, there are quite a few guys who I think would have a problem with him having that claim of being the best on ball defender. I prefer Ben Simmons to defend it on the perimeter and he's not even playing right now. He's not even showing up to training camp and I'd, <laughs> and I'd still prefer him over Avery. Avery Bradley hasn't even played. What's he on about? I don't know. Did you see any other ridiculous quotes or anything that, that was just uh, outrageous? I, I feel like Media Day was a little more tense than it, than it usually is, so maybe not. Yeah. So I mentioned before we started recording, when we were recording Technical File, we covered Media Day, and it was mostly just like the drama aspects or like takeaways that kind of made us be like, oh, my gosh, why? We did not mention the Bucks because the Bucks didn't have any drama. And I didn't mention any funnies because I didn't have any real – funnies to uh to point out because i do agree i feel like the general tone of media day was a little bit more tense um but i did enjoy seeing trey young get gifted a wwe championship belt after he appeared at madison square garden during a show recently to be a heel and i was like he is really leaning in to being like 
Knicks fans' worst nightmare. And I love it. I'm here for it. So that I saw and that I actually applauded. I like that. Yeah, I'm into that. Uh, I was writing about games that uh, you should, you know, look forward to this season. And I had Hawks and Knicks. It's Christmas Day, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, of course, we're looking forward to the Bucks game. That's the game I want to see the most. Uh, but this one is very close second. It should be, it should be a lot of fun. But you mentioned wrestling. Bobby Portis rattled off, you know, some of his favorite <laughs> wrestlers, and it seemed like Brook Lopez was into it as well. Brook Lopez uh, evidently is a big Rey Mysterio fan, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> What do you think about Bobby Portis? And I don't think I've brought this up with you or on the show before, but it is just a curious thing. What do you think about Bobby Portis uh, using... Uh, so, for instance, this is a Bobby, Portis, Bobby Portis quote. Uh, I, I just want to be the best Bobby Portis that Bobby Portis can be. What do you, what do you, what do you think about the, uh, the third-person usage that he rolls with? I'm here for it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up watching The Rock. And all we heard The Rock say was, you know, The Rock does this, The Rock says this, The Rock says know your role. So third person to me is not that unheard of. And given Bobby's personality, it also fits very, very well. Yeah, I'm not going to knock him for it. It's different, but uh, he speaks with so much. It works for him. Uh, He speaks with so much passion, but there's like a mix between uh, passion and then just the silliness. He's laughing and, and carrying on. So uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask him yesterday, I didn't get a chance to, was just uh, the sacrifice that he made. Mm-hmm. And you did kind of point to it, the fact that Milwaukee, um, and this might have been before we started recording, but, you know, Dante DiVincenzo, you know, insinuating that Milwaukee has become a bit of a destination franchise. Um, certainly not something that we've been used to in the past and certainly not something that long-time Bucks fans would expect. You always got to free agency and you're like, all right, can, can all you other teams... Uh, get your signings out of the way so we can pick up the scraps. That's honestly what it was like, but it has changed now. We've seen it with the buyout market. We've seen it with you know, players like Bobby Portis. And admittedly, he came off winning the championship. He understood the system and it, and it obviously worked for him. It was a great place for him. But it is remarkable. It's not worth forgetting the transformation this franchise has had. Remember, you only have to go back a few years ago when the Bucks signed Greg Monroe in free agency. Yes. And that it was, like a, it was like parties in the streets. It was like a, 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 it's this huge franchise moment. Like he chose us, like somebody chose us. Over New York. Because, yeah, like he chose us, Milwaukee. Like, wow, Greg Monroe, like that's our guy. Like, we got moves, like, let's go, like it's time. And look where we are now. Again, it's if you've been a fan for a long time, like this this whole summer has been just completely surreal. Where it's like every so often I'm like, we won a championship, like the Bucks are NBA champions. And I'm like, wow, like they actually did it. They actually did it. And one thing I do plan to do before next season starts is rewatch this this last playoff run. I want to see all, all the series, all the games, go back here, old podcasts from around the time, um, and just kind of relive that moment before, as Giannis would say, we start something new, a new challenge, a new chase. Yeah, well, you haven't got long. You better get started with that because we've got preseason <laughs> basketball coming up this weekend. Uh, it's, it's crazy to think about this weekend. And by the way, uh, speaking of players, old bucks that you wouldn't mind coming back for a training camp. What's Moose up to? Can we get can we get Moose back uh, back in Milwaukee? Come on, that now that is a guy I always wanted to see him do well. He was, um, you know, unfortunate in many ways that the game changed and it it just yep. really did suit him. But likable guy, uh, I think for Bucks fans, you're always going to love him as well because of the reasons we mentioned. Definitely, and if we're also throwing back old bucks. Ursan needs to find his way back here at some point again. We just we got to get some more Ursan minutes. <laughs> he hasn't officially declared he's retired. Uh, I know there was some reports going back a couple of weeks ago that uh, if there was the right situation, he would come back to the NBA, but he didn't want to play in Europe. He would probably probably just retire. I believe he still lives in Wisconsin. So give him a call. Get him down there. Maybe later on in the yeah. season, let him rest up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, let's get this guy a title in Milwaukee. I'm, I'm down for that. I think we, we've covered on all that we wanted to cover today, uh, Camille. It's always a pleasure. You're going to rest your voice. You've been doing too much podcasting tonight. <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been quite an evening. It's been quite an evening. Um, but, yeah, now it's, you know, it's, it's going on 10 o'clock, which it's not late to most people, but I am really like an old lady inside of a, young, a, a 30-year-old, you know, early 30 body, so – it's, 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 it's approaching my bedtime. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be nice, but I had a lot of fun. I appreciate the invite to come on always. It's always fun talking to you and talking bucks and 
Yeah, thanks. Well, I was very worried when we first moved to YouTube about my own internet connection and whether we could do this. So everyone, the one thing that we've learned over the last week with Frank and Justin and Laurie and yourself is that uh, you guys have got good internet over there. So shout out to you guys. <laughs> uh, we've had no issues so far. So we're going to be back tomorrow. Uh, the guys are practicing. They had their first practice today. Uh, we heard from uh, Mamu there. So we'll see what comes up over the next couple of days. I'm sure uh, there will be more news. Uh, and thanks again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. We will be back tomorrow, as I mentioned now, for your second listen today, I already said. But why don't you go and check out Josh Lloyd, fellow Aussie. Maybe you haven't heard enough uh, Australians talking today. Listen to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast. Uh, it's a beauty. But for Camille and myself, we'll catch you guys tomorrow.